to meet you. Very nice to meet you too. I'm so excited to chat with you about this fun, oh. crazy, wild world. <laughs> I think that that's no putting it in the easiest terms. <laughs> that's true. That's true. I know um, it's pretty wild. I know. I, I I just saw it the other day, and I was just so floored by some of the things that these characters get to say. Certainly, the things that they get to do. Um, I've heard Emma Stone describe this as truly her favorite character that she's ever ever been able to play. How is it for you being able to live in through Bella Baxter's eyes? Yeah, I mean it's it's kind of amazing. I know Emma's still like she's like I miss her. Um, <laughs> And I think, yeah, she was just such a great character to write in a way because because um, we could, like in the book, her story is not told. It's told by other people. So when we came mm. to adapt the film, we were like, you know, Yorgos is like, just put her at the centre of the film and we'll find a way, we'll kind of invent the story of what happened to her, which was fun because we could be true to the spirit and the premise of the book, but we could also like go our own way. And she was just a great character because she was just, um to discover her just like just going to discover the world and have a completely intuitive reaction to it all and be kind of society couldn't get its hooks in her and she just seemed this cool shame didn't have a didn't be part of her it was just kind of a like wow what a great satire to write about us but also what a great story to tell about this woman so yeah so yeah and then Emma doing it was like beyond I mean she's incredible. <laughs> it's just like wow you know I know I um you know I I, I appreciate her as a woman as a woman myself yeah. it's fun to see and kind of get to revisit in a way um myself learning a little bit about the world and as you meet different people as she travels and really as you yourself get to go out um you see other people trying to dim her lights a little bit um I guess you know all of this does speak about society. Um, do you maybe hold some of these cynical views of society yourself or are you yeah. maybe more of an optimist? <laughs> I'm I, like, as a person, I'm actually an optimist. Maybe Yorgos is a bit more cynical than me. <laughs> but, um, no, but I think I'm like a satirist on some level. So yeah. I am, I was very like, I, I there is something in me sometimes that's like, what the why do people what's with the control people <laughs> you know what I mean it's like why are you like why is there such an insistent thing in human beings and maybe men in particular when it comes to women but all human beings to control each other's thoughts and ideas and bodies and um and how we perceive everything and what we think the rules should be and why you know why isn't that a more individual kind of thing so I think I do have that I have a very what's just can we leave each other the fuck alone <laughs> to live our lives is that a is that a thing is so, that so yeah. hard to do is that so hard to do but it is so hard to do for us because there is something in in human beings that feels like they need to control each other you know mm -hmm. so that is just something fundamental and so the two sides of that were kind of an interesting dynamic in the movie and obviously following the social codes and what is polite yeah. society as as you put it in the film all of those yeah. different rules that we abide by yeah so it was great to have a character who couldn't abide to them by them because she didn't know them but then sort of still couldn't abide by them because they were so <laughs> antithetical to her intuition and her discovering the world in a curious non-judgmental way mm -hmm. so it just was so rich in that way ideas wise philosophy wise and also it was fun. Like I knew I could write a really fun movie within that and a really funny movie. I, I do have to admit that I haven't had a chance to read the the original novel that this is based oh. off of. But, um, you know, as you mentioned, her story is told a lot through other characters' eyes. I'm also curious about some of these uh, very interesting uh characters but also I mean half duck half pig all these experiments are th those some you know ex extra details in there did that come from you and Yorgos getting to uh, be masterminds in this mad science lab yourself or did a lot of that come from the novel itself I think bits came from the novel but a lot of it was us creating the world of the indicate it's sort of like how do we create a world and I think you're always stuck when you start a movie is 
you're putting the audience in a world. So you have to tell them it's a fantasy world. Mm-hmm. And then it's, you know, it was very um, important to us that we were telling quite a lot quite quickly. It's a period world, but it's also a fantasy world because there's pigs sewn together with chickens. And then there's, you know, so it was a, even the design had that. So we were always going, how do you tell the audience it's not a real world? It's a slightly pushed world, but also then how do we have the dialogue and the characters emotionally grounded? and layered in a way that people could kind of feel it. Um, so, yeah, I guess that's like just the trick, the kind of like work you do to make it work. Who would you say or what would you say was your favourite thing to write in this story? Because we get her at different points in time, different cities with all these different people. Yeah. I think I really loved writing the, I mean, the love affair with Duncan is obviously, oh, yes. <laughs> it's just so fun. Um and funny and it was a great I you know the idea of taking this cat and pulling him apart and and knowing that and even though he wasn't and I really wanted him not to be malicious cat or a sociopath or like just a guy who had, didn't have a clue <laughs> how to deal with anything and and that was part of the satire was like you know people like have the right say their instinct is to love someone, but then they they manifest that through control and they manifest that through why can't you behave the way I want you to? And it's still, it is a kind of love, but they they don't know how to do it if they're not controlling it and they don't know. So I wanted that to be him. And also he didn't understand someone who wasn't just part of society and wasn't playing by the rules. And, and that's really what tore him apart because he completely flipped his world, flipped his view of himself, so he became something he hated. You know, it was it was just such a rich thing. And then you get Mark doing it and you're like, we're off to the races. Mark Ruffalo's tearing it up. <laughs> he got such big laughs from everybody in my audience. I mean, he yeah. he, he tr- so he's fun. he's charming, but he's also so vile. And it's a perfect balance between him. Yeah, he really, yeah, he pitched that so perfectly. So perfectly. Um, with with Bella Baxter, um, especially in the beginning of the film, as we really see her in this infant-like state, which makes sense knowing where she has come from, um, I I was so impressed with Emma's behaviorisms and just the mannerisms that she displays. Um, I guess in your mind, uh, did you write all of those different things, like truly walking so lopsided or throwing all this food around? (laughs) Oh, yeah. I mean, I guess I wrote the throwing food and the kind of like pissing herself and (laughs) um, stuff like that and going in circles, a little bit of that. But then her physicality, her and Yorgos worked on a lot in terms Mm -hmm. of, I think at the start, they were watching toddlers and babies. Mm -hmm. But then they really, you know, then the M was like, well, she's actually an adult. Her bones aren't forming, so she can't move like that. I have to find a way to move that's different. So, yeah, a little bit of the script and a lot of Yoga and Emma working together on her physicality and how she mm-hmm. would move and how that would evolve in the same way that language evolves, her physicality evolves all the time. Mm-hmm. That was kind of, they had to match up and all that kind of stuff. And I think it's also very interesting, you know, so much of this film is focused on her sexual exploration, which, um, you know, in a number of other films and a number of societies, cultures, uh, especially when it comes to a woman, she is told to suppress her sexuality, to not really enjoy the act of having sex with whoever her partner is. Um, and that is the total opposite with this film. You really just wanted to let this girl go wild and explore every pleasure and maybe not so pleasurable part about it. Um, yeah. Why, you know, why focus on that route so much and versus, you know, letting her go through even more human experiences per se? I think it was a mix of like, because the love affair was part of it and the kind of like, I think it was a, it was well, a bunch of things, and everyone is, Emma was talking about it last night, everyone is focused on the sex, but she has constant discovery, and, of course, she discovers her sexuality by herself, and then she discovers love, and she disco- and she doesn't have shame. She is a discoverer mm-hmm. and unjudgmental about it. She's just like, what is the next curiosity I have? Um, and the sex thing, you know, A, you were telling, com- on some level it's a coming-of-age story. Yeah. So it's like, well, we can't not show her contending with her sexuality and we can't in the same way we're like 
she discovers food, Portuguese tarts, and is drinking. <laughs> She's like more, and her answer to everything is more, more sex, more Portuguese tarts, more drinking. <laughs> Until there's a point where she's like, oh, you're more Duncan. And then it's a point it's like, oh, all those things have a cost of more. And so, but she's discovering all these tastes and, and then she's discovering books and then she's discovering. So there was a constant evolution in what she discovered. And I guess sex for her was like a, 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 a kind of way, you know, her sexuality is, it's one thing they wanted, people tried to control more than anything else in a way. So it was that. It was like how to show her contending with that. But it was also a way into her a political, like the brothel is a way into her po- becoming a political person mm-hmm. and becoming a person who can self-create and a person who's not understanding society's rules and thinks it's so thinks she can just go, well, actually, let's change the rules of how brothels work. Mm-hmm. Um, and so I think it was, it was everything. I think her evolution was got to be, you know, it's always going to be sexual, political, emotional, intellectual, and and also like existential in a like, I am creating myself. You know, it was like, did he create her? And in the end, he's like, I didn't. You've created yourself through this journey. You know, so that was sort of how we looked at it. I think we need Bella Baxter in political political office. I mean, she seems the most free and most open to everything. <laughs> well, it's it's true, right? I mean, it's just sort of like uh, it is that thing of you know we are in a very controlling society, and you know mm-hmm. we built Yorgos. What did he call it yesterday? The monstrosity of the society we've built. Or something. <laughs> it's like and, right. So, and I mean, you know, it's um, it is interesting because this film is so so colorful and so fun and you can't help but laugh in certain moments but um you know I I myself and I'm sure many other people watching it they just really felt this immense connection to Bella and this this urge to really want to be as free as you possibly can be free despite other forces of nature trying to bog down on you um I'm sure that was probably very exciting to write a character like this could you did you feel like this was like any other character for you yourself? And how did, you know, how did you connect with her? No, and not dive? Really. I, think, I think it wasn't. And I think that's why Emma, in a way we've talked about it, like, you know, she misses Bella. And I think for me writing it, I was like, well, what if you were just as me, me as a person guy, writing that character, it did make me go, what if, what if you could become a person who was just a sort of, optimistic adventure found life as an optimistic adventure where you were just curious about the next thing and you could let yourself have those moments and you could let yourself be and you could leave yourself alone and you could get society to leave you alone to discover yourself in a different way from the lanes we're just sort of unconsciously put in very early on that we sort of almost don't know we're in and so there was that. I was like, oh, wow. And, you know, I think she had that experience too of like we would, you would love more of her in you as a person. And I think that's, I felt that when I was writing it, she felt that when she acted it. And it's nice that I feel like people do feel that, mm-hmm. you know, that sense of like that would be amazing. That would be very liberating to have at least some of that in you. It makes you wonder what what might be possible how different you would be at the end of the day (laughs) well yeah exactly i think that's the thing you don't you don't know and we we sort of are a bit trapped in our ideas of ourselves and our and society traps us in an idea before we've even we're even out you know and i remember i have little kids at the time i was writing and they were asking me all these questions or i would tell them there was some rule or something and they'd literally (laughs) question it and be like that's not make any sense. And I I literally end up going, yeah, I know, but that's what we're doing. That's, yep, yep, I know, it's a rule. I know society doesn't really make sense. We're just all doing it, okay? Can we all go? <laughs> Can we all just come along on that ride. But it was stupid, but I was having those conversations. So that did inform the idea of, what if these kids could just could not have that, you know? Yes, it would be an interesting world for all of us. I don't know what it would be, but it would be probably more interesting. (laughs) Tony, I have to wrap up, but I just want to thank you so very much for your time and your conversation today. (laughs) Thanks, Emma. It was lovely. Thank you. Enjoy the rest of your day. 